Good morning, folks. We're going to analyze a solar catastrophe level event at Mercury, major storms on Earth, a number of articles relating to the disaster cycle from the cosmic side of things, going to be fun starting at spaceweathernews.com, where the last day on our star was completely dominated by the patchy coronal hole structures. That active region was chased over the limb by those plasma filaments bottom right. While the coronal holes may intensify the geospace solar wind this week, right now the stream is calming. Purple plasma speed dropping under 400 kilometers per second this morning, down into normal range and geomagnetic conditions, remain quiet, all in the green. Well folks, that super jet stream crossing the Atlantic took its toll on the weather below. Hurricane force winds, storm surges, flooding, roads blocked, air travel canceled, major waves at the coastlines, and it's not done yet. Eyes open today. Meanwhile, this keeps happening. It's been quite the lopsided season as record snows continue to fall in some areas, while one of the snowiest cities on Earth is left scratching its head wondering where the powder went. From powder to dust, how about this? Our solar system ejects a few tons of dust every second. Tons by the second. This is due to being pushed out by the solar wind and expansion and heating from the photoionization by UV light. Tons of dust per second for eons and eons. So when we say that the solar system interiors are more pristine and the interstellar galactic space is polluted with gas and dust and nova remnants, that's what we're talking about. We've got confirmation that the fried egg nebula is a recurrent nova. They thought they'd spotted two shells before, but now even a third is confirmed. All the nova shells are said to have released between 30 and 120 years ago, not a bad recurrence cycle for a yellow hypergiant star. And speaking of Nova, long before the Sun formed and the triple star system of Centauri formed and all the nearby stars, a supermassive star existed here and exploded. We see the remnants of it everywhere, surrounding the local bubble where our local stellar neighborhood sits. And folks, it's even shaped like a lobed Nova. We see a number of these north-south blastouts, including this 2011 T-Pix recurrent nova, and indeed, folks, that's exactly what they're looking at as the shape of the local bubble. And speaking of lobed features around an axis, the largest ones in the entire galaxy are known as the Fermi bubbles, hot plasma heated to the point of gamma ray emission. Once upon a time during a galactic outburst, this would have been lit up much more visible, and interestingly, since everyone who doesn't live at the polar region of Earth sees the galaxy cross the sky vertically like this, had someone been around to see such a galactic outburst and low brightening, it would have looked incredibly similar to something we saw yesterday, from the lab and numerous central energetic sources in space. So who remembers Comet Ison? In 2013, during perihelion, it was met with tremendous CME activity from the Sun, now, from Earth's perspective, the CMEs weren't aimed our way, but Mercury was in prime hit position. In fact, Stereo spacecraft caught the event perfectly here as Stereo A has Mercury in the field of view, bright dot to the left reflecting sunlight, direct CME impact. Stereo B even caught the eruption heading over towards that direction. This storm is said to have caused a field collapse at Mercury, allowing solar plasma to penetrate to the surface. Now, while Mercury's field is weak, it is there, but it was overcome in much of the same way that could possibly happen someday at Earth. We know the Carrington event almost did it already in 1859, and another 200-year storm or one of the more rare super flares would not only collapse the sun-facing field, but could arc discharge down with the force of Earth's field and that of the solar wind. Last but not least, We've seen hints of this before, and we won't get much more until we can study the inside of the sun close up, gonna be a while, but still, this powerfully counter-canceling electric field setup inside the star makes its rounds again. And it could exist inside only, where its cancellation of electromagnetic forces would hide its existence to all outside of the star. We only see its effects when we're looking at sunspots and some of the more energetic activity. But this is the rare sixth gear that can be accessed for super flare activity and outer shell releases in the micronova. Now obviously, today's featured video is the Cosmic Disaster Movie, almost all of the articles were talking about the subject, and the enormous playlist that surrounds it. It is linked for you below. And lastly folks, the call to have observers only working on the third edition of Weatherman's Guide to the Sun is well heard. 
Anyone who wants to help edit the text to the best it can be for our community and get a sneak peek at a few parts of the third edition, please contact us via email. Why shouldn't the observers be the ones to get credit for editing the book? Credit as editors will obviously be given in the book to those who can cross the finish line. Hope to see some of you. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.